Okay. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. Just gonna. You still have your mic yet? Right I check. not not a wireless like this now. One two three four. One two three four five. He's always in the phone. Yeah, dude. That's right. I don't think he's even calling anybody. He's just used to it. He so. just he just keeps it there. He just rests. He rests his like, cheek hey. on, on the phone. It just keeps it warm. That's right. Put a rubber band on. Yeah. Are yeah. so you gonna leave it around? Yeah, yeah. I was gonna leave, uh, put it wherever you need to. Okay. You want me to do a mic check for you? Or? Okay. No, no, I'll just come here before they walk in for I can turn it off. Yeah, I know, so I can battery. save some battery. Yeah. I think I'm going to do that as well. So I'm, uh, I feel like I'm on my last two so I'm using that one for months already. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a replacement either. All right, I'm just going to leave it. Yeah, it's still there. on you. One, two, three, one, two, three, mic check, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, one, one. I was going to ask you, I look like a politician, yeah? One, two, three, four, I might run for. No, no, I'm not going to run for. It. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.
Can you hear the tap? One, two, three, four, five. Are you all right? <laughs> you have the, the drunk walk. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That was me a year ago. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's good. Sound better?
this channel for? Christina, Christina Solis, hello. I know you're watching, vote for me. Check, 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 check.
right side, you can stand right behind them. Is that Thunder or is that the trash? That's no, no. Thunder. <laughs> I hope not. Yes. And we definitely want to try a little bit tighter here for a snap for the front of the shot. Why are you going to be They need to be a front. You all need to be a Right up here, yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. We'll stand behind right. you. Phil, you're great right there. Uh, Put you in the middle. Man. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I am City Commissioner Veronica Vela Whitaker. On behalf of the City of McAllen, Mayor Jim Darling, and City Commissioners, we thank you for being here today. As many of you already learned, we have an extraordinary situation here in McAllen. In the last few weeks, the City of McAllen has had to step up to the plate and provide assistance to families crossing the borders. Moreover, we are thankful and proud of the local, state, and federal officials and the charitable non-governmental organizations that have helped make Allen efficiently and humanly deal with this humanitarian crisis. Thank you. But this media conference is not about the city of McAllen. Today, to get a first-hand look at this situation, we welcome McAllen's very own Congressman Rubén Hinojosa, Congressman Fili Mondela, and the ranking member of the House Homeland Security Committee for Mississippi, Congressman Benny Thompson. Welcome to each of you. These are great leaders who completely understand what happens along the border. And more importantly, they are committed to finding solutions to our challenge. Gentlemen, we appreciate all the work that you do. Again, thank you all for being here. And now we want to welcome the Congressman Ruben Hinojosa to further. Commissioner, we want to thank you for the work that you all do for the city of McAllen. As Commissioner, you and the Mayor Jim Darlin and all the other members of, of the council are doing an outstanding job in dealing with this crisis that we're visiting uh, facilities here in McAllen Border Patrol. And I want to say that uh, it is a pleasure to work with the city of McAllen because I believe that the leaders are dedicated to public service and that it is a pleasure to uh, oftentimes have Teclo come up to Washington representing you and uh, asking for federal assistance for so many projects that are making McAllen the All-America City. I want to thank you for your introduction, especially for your assistance in preparing this press conference and for all of your help. I'd like to also thank all of you who are here today to bring light to this very serious situation that we have in our congressional district and all along the Texas-Mexico border. I uh, can tell you that a little over a month ago, I called for a full investigation into the reports of mass overcrowding of undocumented immigrants in my district in deep South Texas. We learned instantly that this was a severe humanitarian crisis which had started several years ago but has increased more so by at least 300% in the previous two or three months. Through this, is a co even though this is a complex issue, it is a reminder that as a nation, we need to be more engaged in Latin America. We also know there has been a sharp increase in violence that is driving children to the United States. Violence especially in Central America. Honduras tops the world in the most murders according to the United Nations and El Salvador and Guatemala are not far behind. Last week, the Congressional Hispanic Caucus members met with several of their representatives and I asked ambassadors and their staffs of Guatemala, El Salvador, 
Honduras, and Mexico to meet with approximately 20 members of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus who have made comprehensive immigration reform our signature issue, and we're still hoping that we can get it done by the 113th Congress. Congress. At that meeting, they told us that poverty, that violence and active recruitment of children by gangs and the drug cartels are leaving parents with no other choice other than to send their children elsewhere. To the United States, to Mexico, to Panama, to Nicaragua, to Costa Rica, or possibly to Belize. As one parent said, I would rather have my child die on the journey to the United States than at my front door. Quote from one of the parents that talked to us. We must deal with the children who are already here humanely, provide them due process and work with our Central American and Mexican counterparts to help address this situation. Many of our Republican colleagues across the aisle have tried to blame this humanitarian crisis on President Obama's support for immigration reform. And that is totally wrong. Though, there, though that is false, it is true that passing a comprehensive immigration reform is part of the solution, and we all know that. The parents of some of these unaccompanied children came to the United States to work and left their child in the care of a family member, like possibly a grandparent. If comprehensive immigration reform was passed, Parents would be able to legally petition for their child. We as a society are judged by how we take care of the most vulnerable among us. As Americans, we are being judged by the world on how we handle this humanitarian crisis. All eyes are on us, especially here in the Rio Grande Valley. With this, I urge all of my colleagues from both sides of the aisle Republicans, Democrats, independents to find effective, wise, and compassionate solutions that will help resolve this crisis. Thank you again, and now I would like to introduce an outstanding American, the ranking member of the U.S. House of Representatives, Homeland Security Committee Congressman Benny Thompson from Mississippi. And if I may, I want you all to know that in 2006, Congressman Benny Thompson was selected as the first Democratic Chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee. As Chairman, he introduced and passed the most comprehensive Homeland Security package ever since 9-11. I'd like to ask Congressman Filimon Bella, a good friend and colleague from Brownsville, to come to the podium, and Congressman Bella will also serve on the House is now serving on the House Homeland Security. Mr. Vela, won't you please come forward and take the podium? Thank you, Congressman Novosa, uh, Congressman Thompson. Thank you uh, for coming to visit uh, South Texas. Um, I want to follow up on the words that uh, we just heard from Congressman Novosa uh, by, by saying that uh, having just visited the facility um, here in McAllen, where many of these uh, women and children and family units are uh, are being held uh, temporarily. I, over the last few weeks, I've read stories from some of our other colleagues in the state legislature um, who have visited the facility and seen uh, and, uh, the, these women and children, and uh, I can understand uh, why uh, they have been so stricken with thoughts and compassion and what we as a country need to do uh, to make sure we take care uh, of these families while they are here. Over, over the past few weeks as we've tried to wrap our arms around this situation, uh, many times we have just as many questions as we have answers. Uh, but today as I sit here, uh, I will, uh, or as I stand here, I will tell you that um, in my view, what we have is three crises occurring all at once. We have an immigration reform crisis because 
85% of these people that are coming across uh, are coming to be reunified with family members all across this country. These are the family members that are working in our hotels, they're working in our restaurants, they're working in our construction sites. And that's why immigration reform uh, is something that we need to act on and we need to act on it right now. We also have a logistical crisis. We have a logistical crisis from the standpoint of our detention process and our legal process and the way uh, our system is set up to process people that are coming across. And finally, and very clearly, we have a humanitarian crisis on our continent in Central America. We've, our country has focused a lot over the past decade in the Middle East, Eastern Europe, and in Asia. And I think it is imperative that we, use, we begin uh, to aim that same focus here on our own continent in Central America and Mexico. Uh, and without saying much more, I do want to introduce, I have the great pleasure of serving on the Homeland Security Committee in the House of Representatives and as our ranking uh, leader uh, on the Democratic side of that committee, I'm pleased to introduce to you Congressman Benny Thompson. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be among uh, two great leaders in the House of Representatives as well as uh, our local county and city officials. My primary responsibility here uh, on this visit is fact-finding. Uh, we had a hearing earlier in the week that talked about uh, the crisis that was occurring in the Rio Grande border with respect to children and others coming across the border in a greater number. But also we heard during that hearing that Secretary Johnson had designated FEMA as the coordinating entity to make sure that federal assets were pulled together uh, to make sure that we address that crisis. Upon uh, briefing this morning, uh, it is clearly, in my estimation, uh, a crisis. Uh, anytime you process 1,200 uh, individuals a day uh, in this situation, we have a crisis. Uh, more importantly is DHS's or Border Patrol's responsibility is passed on to other agencies. The question in my mind is, are we passing uh, this situation on in a timely manner? Are we addressing the housing and health care needs? What I see here is a yeoman's effort being put together on behalf of our Border Patrol men and women uh, to do just that. Uh, from a public policy standpoint, we have to find out why uh, the spike uh, now we have to look at whether or not in addressing that spike we can look at the countries where the majority of the individuals come and set some things in place. Secretary Johnson as well as the President talked yesterday about getting those countries uh, to put information out saying uh, America is not what you hear, it is not the place where you need to come, uh, you need to stay where you are. Uh, that's a message that will take time to filter through. So in the interim, we have to address this situation. Uh, our hearing on Tuesday uh, highlighted all those concerns. What I see in the facility behind me is an effort on a 24-7 basis to try to address that humanitarian crisis that exists. Uh, I'm concerned about the numbers. I'm concerned about what we have to do. But my sole purpose here today is fact-finding. I have an opportunity as ranking member of the committee to do that. The briefings were very important. Uh, I look forward to going back uh, after this break, working with uh, the department and other agencies to try to make sure that the process works. Uh, the hiccups that have occurred, I'm convinced, is based on the number of people who have flooded the system. So with that, uh, I will step back and turn it over uh, to the hands of uh, your local congressperson. Thank you very much. Thank you, Benny. We want to thank you for being here.
It's a pleasure to say that many members of Congress have already visited here in the last two weeks, and the numbers will triple tomorrow and Monday and Thursday because there are many members of Congress who do not represent the Texas border region or any part of the Mexico, United States region, all the way to California, Arizona, and New Mexico. And they want to see it for themselves. And that will help us a great deal because each member of Congress is one vote that we need to be able to get approval for additional funding to help our area. I've had conversations with uh, Mayor Darling and with other members, elected officials from the county and the state legislators, state representatives and state senators, and they're asking for additional federal funds to come down and we're going to try to get that. But it isn't possible to get them to vote this way if they are not familiarized and better understand what we are seeing ourselves. So welcome them. Welcome all the senators, United States senators who are coming and uh, members of Congress just like we had today because they are going to give us the federal relief that is being requested. We're ready to take uh, questions, either our, our, our ranking member, uh, Thompson, or my colleague, Bella, from Brownsville, and represents part of Hidalgo County also. Yes, Steve? Can you get up closer so we can hear you? Uh, has, has there been any contact with the Mexican federal authority regarding the situation in the, the border? Is there any compromise on the visit we have with the Mexican official regarding what they're going to do about the, the, the country? Well, let me answer your question by saying that somewhere between 20 and 25 percent of those uh, unaccompanied children are coming from Mexico. The other 75 to 80 percent are coming from three countries in Central America. And so Mexico is prepared to work with us and to help us. They are going through their country. It's the shortest route from some of those countries that I mentioned to you earlier to come through the Rio Grande Valley than it is to go through, say, El Paso or through uh, even uh, Laredo and, and uh, into Dallas. So there's no question in our mind that Mexico is a good working partner. Their president, their elected officials are coming to visit us here in the Rio Grande Valley and we are prepared to work with them. Yes, Steve. The Sisters of Mercy charity group has visited those Steve, uh, I don't want to get into definitions of uh, terms, uh, whether it's refugees or un unaccompanied minors. The point is, when you deal with children, you have to give it a very, very high priority, and that is exactly what we as members of Congress are doing. We're uh, putting aside many of the other priorities that we have and coming here to see it for ourselves, to see the children, to see those uh, uh, parents that are uh, accompanying some of them. We call them family units. And uh, no question about it, it is very, very uh, saddening to see a facility that is prepared to handle maybe 350 to 400 uh, attend, uh, of these uh, folks, unattended uh, uh, minors, in a facility that has a thousand. I'd like to have them answer that question. I think in terms, with respect to some of the legal questions that are going to arise as a result of the situation we're seeing, we have a legal process uh, for that, and um, the, the legal system itself will make, have to make that determination. However, I, I must say that uh, I, I, I can't believe that there is a human being in this world uh, that who would not who having witnessed what we witnessed just a while ago, um, seeing um, the, the faces of fear and sadness uh, and, 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 and deep angst uh, from some of the children and the women that 
were in that facility, that there would be any person, that no human in this world could not leave um, that, that building and leave those rooms without being heartbroken. And so I think that, uh, you know, how we as a country deal with uh, the, the, the influx of women and children that are coming from Central America, I think is going to say a lot about us as a country in the future. And, and uh, you know, time will tell uh, where all that ends up. But I do believe, uh, without question again, uh, that uh, to the extent that we have not acted on immigration reform, to the extent that 85% of the unaccompanied children uh, that are coming across are coming to be reunited uh, with their family members who are in all likelihood part of the 11 million people that are here, a uh, great portion of those who are working in our hotels, our restaurants, and construction sites, and not here just here in the Rio Grande Valley, but all across this country, it just cries out for immigration reform. Well, the short-term problem is the children are coming, and we have to address it. Uh, as uh, the congressman just said, we are a better country. Uh, we have to treat our young people uh, in a manner that we all can feel proud. So whatever the definition, they're here. And what we have to do is work through the process of a solution. Long-term, we have to work with the countries uh, to say, uh, do the best you can to prevent uh, anyone from just coming to this country legally. But that's a long-term solution. And it's a problem we've addressed over time. But what I saw this morning, uh, as already been said, on the faces of the young people, uh, we have to help them. Uh, and uh, as the ranking member on this committee, uh, I will do that. But I also support the policy of saying to those countries, uh, you have to do a better job at educating your people uh, that what they are being told and the reasons to come to the U.S. are not the reasons that that uh, that, that really happen uh, or should be. Thank you. Uh, in closing, I wanted to say that uh, we're going to make ourselves available to do one-on-one -on -one interviews with uh, the different uh, media who are here. But I want to close by saying that I've served under three presidents, President Clinton, President Bush, and now under President Obama. And I can tell you that the two terms by President Bush, he talked about the need for comprehensive immigration reform. He supported it then, supports it now. And how those in the majority today can be blaming this particular crisis that we are addressing today on President Obama is totally wrong. What we need to do is to have all the country tell Speaker Boehner and the new uh, whip, McCarthy, that H.R. 15 needs to be brought to the House floor to be debated and voted on during the 113th Congress so that that will be one of the solutions to this crisis that we have uh, seen and uh, heard and from officials from Border Patrol. So we thank you for coming out this morning, and with that, this uh, press conference is ended. Thank you. Can you get a quick picture right over here with y'all? Just to put uh, down okay. with everyone. Right here, just to get, get a quick picture, and then they'll do the one-on-one okay. interviews. Okay. Okay.